everyone, my name is Monique, and today I'm going to be showing you how to play a game that is currently on Kickstarter called Mutagen, designed by Alexandros Kapodakis and published by Dranda Games, who are helping sponsor this video. In Mutagen, the discovery of a powerful element known as the Great Shard revolutionized biogenetic modifications. And over the course of four rounds, players must strategically harness various elements to score points and prove themselves worthy of becoming the next keeper of the Great Shard. This is a customizable worker placement game for one to four players that is set in a 1920s biopunk universe. And so today I'm going to be showing you how to play it. But for more information regarding the game, I've included a link to their Kickstarter campaign in the description below. Last but not least, if you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. And with that, we are ready to begin. So if you'd please direct your attention to the set of the table, welcome to the biopunk world of Mutagen, where the industrial revolution is alive and well, and there are floating cities thanks to the Great Shard, which is of course a powerful element that can cause people to mutate amongst other things. And so in this game, players are competing to become the next keeper of the shard by sending out their crew of workers to six different locations in order to collect elements and use them to upgrade their ships, deliver them to the sacred tree, increase your reputation and progress, and of course, mutating your workers. Now each player will have their own player board, which represents their airship. And so as you can see, I only have one player set up today. In addition, players will also have a crew of four different workers. We have your robot, a thug, a spy, and an engineer. Over the course of the game, three out of the four of these workers will be able to mutate, uh, customizing them as well as their actions. And they'll also be able to take actions that are specific to their worker type when you send them out to the various locations. And so the game is played over the course of four rounds, and each round consists of three phases, starting with selecting mutations. At the start of each round, players are going to lay out a certain number of cards, mutation cards, equal to the number of players plus one, which means in a two-player game, we're going to lay out three of these mutation cards. Then, in reverse turn order, so starting with the player seated to the right of the first player, on your turn, you'll choose one of the available mutations and place it on an available slot on your player board. So as an example, if I were to choose this mutation, I could assign it to my thug. And now this specific worker will have a mutation action that allows me to collect three shards each time I send them out to a location. And there are a wide variety of mutation cards in the deck, so I'll be discussing them a little bit more later. And once all players have drafted a mutation card, then the one left over gets discarded into the discard pile, and players move into the next phase, where starting with the first player and going clockwise, players will be taking turns placing one worker each in one of the six different locations on the board and resolving actions until all workers have been placed. Now the board is home to six different locations, and each location has a certain number of worker placement spots equal to the number of players. Which means in a two-player game, only the top two spaces of each location are available. And you'll place your worker in the top most available space of the location that you'd like to visit. And so as an example, if it were my turn and I wanted to send out my thug because they have a mutation, I would send them to the top most available spot of the location I'd like to visit. Then there are three different types of actions that you can take in any order of your choosing. There's the location action, there are actions that are related to the specific type of worker that you've placed out at the location. And there are also mutation actions, if the worker that you placed out has any mutations attached to them. And if my worker had multiple mutations, then I can activate all of them. But for any action that you choose to not take, you can always take one shard from the supply. And shards are one of the main resources in the game. And I should mention that each player has a robot that's a part of their crew, which cannot be mutated. But when placing out your robot, they're considered a wild in terms of the worker specific actions that you can take, which means you can choose any one of the three worker actions there. Now let's just say, for example, another player had gone to that location before I placed my worker there. Of course, my worker would go to the spot below theirs, but once I finished resolving all of my actions, then the player who controls the worker above my worker gets to take a reaction, which means they get to activate one of the mutations that are tied to their specific worker. And you can place multiple workers at the same location, but when doing so, it does not grant you a reaction. Only pieces belonging to other players who are directly above yours gains a reaction. But that is essentially how the worker placement mechanic works in this game, and again, you can choose the order in which you place out your four workers. 
So then, starting with the location actions, one of the main things that you're going to be doing in this game is collecting various elements in order to install them on your airships to score points at the end of each round, deliver them to the sacred tree, or turn them in in order to go up on the different element tracks. Now in this game, there are four different types of elements, and they are each represented on these element tracks. We have crystal, gas, liquid, and ore. And each element also comes in four different colors. Blue, green, pink, and yellow. And so placing a worker in any of these three locations will gain you an element token at that specific location. Now in gaining an element, you can choose to either place it in your storage in order to save it for later if you'd like to deliver it to the sacred tree, for example, or you can install it in your ship and any elements that are installed are placed there for the rest of the game typically. Now at the start of the game, each player has two available spaces for installing elements. But whenever you place an element, you must respect the requirements of the space. And these are going to be requirements for a specific color or specific type of element. Any gray element spaces are wild, which means you can place literally any element there. But as an example, if I wanted to place an element here, it would have to be a pink one. Now, one of the main rules for placement are that no two elements that are adjacent to each other can share a characteristic. Which means because I placed a blue gas element here, I would have to place a pink element of any type other than gas. Now over the course of the game, you'll also have the opportunity to add more spaces to your airship for installing elements. And that's specifically when placing out your engineer. Their worker specific action allows you to take the storage token that's at that location. And whenever you place these, you must be able to pay for them in shards. And the amount of shards you pay is printed on these spaces. Now there are no placement restrictions for these, but you do have to be cognizant of the element placement restrictions because you don't want to add a storage space where you won't be able to legally place elements. And at the end of each round, any elements that are installed in your airship will score you two points. And every column that is fully completed with storage spaces will score you the number of points at the top of the column. So as an example, if I was able to complete this column by placing out an additional storage here, then at the end of each round, I'll score one point. And that's essentially how these three locations works. And these elements don't get refilled until the end of your turn. Now, like I was mentioning, instead of installing elements into your airship, you can place them in one of your available storage spaces. And stored elements can either be used to deliver to the sacred tree or to turn in in order to go up on these element tracks. And so assigning a worker to the sacred tree location allows you to fulfill any number of the tree cards at the top here. And each card shows a certain combination of elements that you'll need to turn in from your storage in order to score them. And when fulfilled, each tree card gains you a certain amount of shards from the supply. In addition, at the end of the game, each pair of same colored tree card that you've fulfilled will score you three points. And any leftover tree cards that do not have a pair will score you one point. So fulfilling these cards are a good way to score end game points, but also to gain in game shards, which you'll need in order to hire crew members and progress up this progress track. Alternatively, when placing a worker at this location, you can discard elements from your storage in order to go up the same type of element track. And so if I wanted to discard this gas element, I'd move up one space on the gas track. And at the end of each round, these tracks will also score you points depending on how far you progressed up. And it's either going to be two, three, or four points, depending on where your marker is. In addition, these tracks directly correlate with the different crew members requirements, as you'll see later. And finally, the last location at the very bottom here allows you to turn in shards in order to progress up the progress track. And it's going to be according to the chart here. You can turn in two shards to go up two spaces, four shards for five spaces, or six shards to go up eight spaces. And when moving up the track, if you meet or pass through a space that's connected to a bonus token, then you just resolve that token. In addition, there are also certain markers along the track which will score you points for meeting or exceeding those spaces. And those are all the different location actions in the game. As for the worker specific actions, the thug when placed typically allows you to gain more elements. And so as you can see, the thug spots in each location show a specific symbol and that pertains to the location where you can gain the element from. So as an example, when placing a thug at this location, you can take an element from the location that has the claw symbol. 
As for the engineer, we've already briefly discussed what their benefit is. They allow you to gain additional storage to install in your airship. But at other locations, such as down here, their worker-specific action gains you two shards. And at these two locations, when placing out your engineer, you'll choose one of the four element colors, and each of those elements that you discarded in order to take the location action, you actually get to keep and install in your airship. As for the spy, the spy allows you to hire crew members, and these crew members will earn you points in the game depending on how far you've progressed along the tracks that they care about. But in order to hire a crew member, you have to pay a certain amount of shards at the top left-hand corner of the card. And so in this example, if I were to hire this crew member, I would pay two shards. And at the end of the game, I'll score either one, four, or six points depending on how far up I've progressed along the gas element track. Some crew members, such as this one, will score you a set number of points for being the furthest along on that specific track. And this crew member over here will gain you two points for each step that both of the shown element trackers have progressed up on their tracks. And there are a couple of other things that the spy allows you to do, such as just gaining points, but that is their main job typically, gaining you crew cards. And again, the robot worker is wild. So when placing out the robot, you can choose any of the three available uh, worker type actions to take. And lastly, we have mutations. Some mutations are very straightforward, such as the one that I had drafted, which gains me three shards. But when taking these mutation actions, you have to pay the leftmost amount of shards if it's on your turn, or if you are taking the mutation action as a reaction, then you pay what's ever on the right. Now, some mutations such as the drill are rather straightforward, but other mutations will gain you more lucrative benefits just at a higher shard cost. And these are gonna be things such as taking an element from a location or gaining a crew card. And so over the course of the game, you'll want to customize your workers according to your needs. And once all players have placed out all four of their workers, then the round ends and you go into the end of round phase, which is basically scoring two points for each of your installed elements. You'll score points according to each column that you've completed with these storage tiles. And you'll score points depending on how far you progressed up each of the four element tracks. Then you pass the first player marker to the next player clockwise and you turn the dial to proceed to the next round. And at the end of the fourth round, then players go into endgame scoring. And at that point, you'll score points for each of your crew cards, depending on how well you were able to complete their requirements, as well as for having matching colored pairs of fulfilled tree cards, three points for each pair and one point for each leftover. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins and becomes the new keeper of the Great Shard. And that's essentially how you play Mutagen. Now again, this game is currently on Kickstarter, so for more information regarding the game, I've included a link to their campaign in the description below. Otherwise, if you have any questions about anything that you saw here today, please feel free to leave me a comment down below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you all so much for watching the video. I really hope it was helpful. If you enjoy content like this and would like to see more in the future, please consider subscribing. Thank you. Bye.